position where you've got the jump and he follows through with a bit of damage from the support role. So there's going to be a lot of stuff here where Sniper is, you know, looking at four jump heroes. It, it's similar to how he uh, does the build up for the Dark Willow as well. Also eventually gets the Blink Dagger uh, with these items. We might see him go for a four staff perhaps in this game as well with the RP available or even the, you know, random stun into Magnus trying to skewer someone. Four staff can be good for disjointing that. And get people away. Well, Ari, again, got that around with the next assassin with his boots up first. Doesn't walk up the high ground there as planets were waiting for him. And, uh, oh, Waga, do you want to say the line? Fortnite man. Oh, do you want to say the other line? <laughs> first game of the day? <laughs> no, 10 seconds to go. 10 seconds to go? Huh? The late smoke? Oh, yeah, Pioneers, yeah. Yeah, they're going to do the same thing as they <laughs> oh, always do. I'm getting, uh, that, I'm getting tired of pointing out that they're doing this, you know. At this point, <laughs> I feel like teams should have done their research, and I, I think they have. Uh, Pioneers, yeah, always do the 30-second the smoke. Yep. The plan. Um, they look for some, some kill or something. Late smokers towards the, towards the runes. Yeah, I mean, at, at the very least, They've secured themselves the two out of the four runes. Like that's the that's like the worst case scenario from this smoke move that they do. Sometimes they get three, sometimes they get first blood, and here it is just going to be the two for two. I mean, it's it's always worth to smoke at least, um, whether you do it immediately or wait a little bit like this. <laughs> QPFY sees himself a little lasted here. Mana Ooh. burn does get dropped on him, but twenty gold, easy. And the uh, yeah, Chen creep on cooldown, so can't run into mid to. Well piss off the sand strong. king again like they did in the last series yeah but i guess also the late smoke helps you get to lane faster too right it kind of obscures the, the vision from the enemy gets you into these room spots maybe a first blood and then if you don't come into contact with enemies you just run back to lanes yeah it's a good way to just uh get some good positioning perfectly lasted some first creep wave here from moonlight four out of four for the sand king he's uh used the sandstorm to farm top lane we see a little bit of bullying here onto the nyx assassin clock showing his prowess in the 1v1 Oh, yeah. And yeah, just gets shoved all the way back to his tower. Yeah, Nyx is just running into a tree line. He's like, I want a big creep. Let me go Let me go mind flare someone. Yeah, blocks the small camp, so no pulls. Block blocks the large. So nothing there for Ari to play with. Ari's running away. He doesn't want any of this. And the Dar Observer Ward in the jungle also blocks the camp, right? So yeah, Ari can't even go in there and get it. Yeah, that's actually very smart. They put that ward to prevent him from going in and mana burning. Minus like, one uh, creep camp. Yeah, it's like they'll see him doing lane shenanigans or waiting to drag the wave, and they block the camp. It's a really, really nice ward. As Stop Ari's shirts. realized, he's got to go all the way around here. Uh, this is... I mean, he's going to have to do a TP move. TP, uh, yeah. He has lost the clockwork enough here. Actually, going to just keep mana burning. He doesn't even want to do the TP. <laughs> of course, not in danger of dying to a clockwork. He has boots himself and clock doesn't, so he is outpacing him. And he's just looking at that centaur like that's the next meal. This, this is some weird ass <laughs> gameplay, man. He already ruined three of the creep camps here. He's gonna stack one of them, I think. Yeah. But he's he's jungling. Like we, we don't have the jungle yeah. role in Dota anymore. Jungling Nyx. Ori disagrees. He's gonna mana burn that mana uh, that ogre as well. QPFY, well. meanwhile, very they're very being chased probably. a little bit. Centaur is going to come in and grab the creep wave. As Seb put that bit of pressure on the lash. But yeah, there's, there's other lanes. You know, Ari, he's doing his classic nonsense, getting in behind enemy lines and being annoying. But and 23 Savage and Seb down at bottom, having a decent time. Nine and five on the Medusa. Centaur at three and three. But it looks like Lash has been doing the same kind of story with the lane dragging. Try and get away from this Chen, who is a very strong laner. And... Um, Ten Medusa is uh, definitely stronger than the Centaur Leshrac here. Cent Lesh is strong if you can overwhelm your opponent, but not really possible. The creep is great for tanking the Edict damage as well, so the mm. matchup against Chen is not great for Leshrac. That's true. And he's got failed to deward the big camp as well. Chen just gets the sentry immediately. Good start for bottom lane. And looking towards mid with 18 and 9 for the sniper versus the Sand King, who's struggling a little bit at 11 and 0. We knew that was going to be the case. Yeah. I mean, again, 9 with this shrapnel build, right? Just so much nuke damage comes out quickly under the Sand King. I'm taking a couple of hits and the shrapnel every time he wants to get one last hit. It's a, a pretty hefty price to pay. But he's now jungling almost exclusively. 
he's yeah. not gonna get the best start here. So uh, top lane, the fact that this Magnus is also doing as well as he is, I think OG are getting away to a great start here. Already a 1k gold lead in this game, three minutes in. It's a brilliant start for them. They've, of course, don't have to leave these side lanes to you know, recuperate anything mid as OG, so they can just keep the pressure on. And you're kind of forcing that hand of Palanitia here to you know, maybe go and help the Sand King or move out the side lanes. Try and get something else done as the clockwork is. But Ari's already guarding that top water rune. So he's blocked it from the Sand King and the clock. Who were, They were moving there. And Nine denies the other one. Yeah, that's very nice. He prevents the Sand King from getting a refill there. Sand King is full resources, but he won't be able to uh, go to mid lane, really. Top lane, attempted Ooh. skewer on the tower. But Whisper doesn't quite connect on Crystal Ice. Uh, not quite. Crystal Eye is very experienced. Saw that one coming. Yeah, Luna, quick hero as well, and she has boots, so not that easy to cap, uh, catch her. And Ari's back up here, so the clockwork's got to come and follow him. They are playing forward onto Whisper. Yeah. Knowing that Skewer was on cooldown, good attempt to get in behind him, but Ari, good job holding the line. Yeah, it's chasing funny to see him. him just zapping these neutral creeps all the time. Looking at the side lanes as well, the Medusa still standing strong here even as they try and do some shenanigans. And Chen, Seb just exerting his pressure over this Lesh Shark. Lesh, Lesh has not been allowed to do that much at all in this game so far. Yeah, not, not even being able to drag creep waves either. Like, he can't play the lane, and then Seb is making sure that after not playing the lane, you can't actually manipulate the creep wave and pull it away anywhere. Mid lane is just escalating as well. 34 to 21. Zero denies, of course, for Sand King. Very difficult to get any denies against the sniper. So, this uh, first pick, Sand King, again being dealt with very accordingly here by OG. Nine thinks he's playing Invoker with all those denies. 21. He's got more denies than Centaur has last hit. <laughs> yeah. All Fortnite, man. Got a fair number. A ward in behind the tower there from Ari. Be able to spot the Sand King when he returns to the lane. Ori already has his mana boots as well, so he can indefinitely stay on the map and uh, keep mind flaring creeps. Six yeah. minute power rune coming up. Chen running towards bottom. A little bit late. Oh, that's an illusion that spawned up at top. Look at the Sand King. He comes here, level five. He's like, I'm going to get a rune. Doesn't spawn there. Then he gets tagged by a couple of spells. And loses like a third of his health. Always annoying to play Sand King against Nyx as well because he can, anytime he wants, stun you with that Spite Carapace later on. I mean, he doesn't have it yet, but eventually in this game, that Sandstorm becomes a, a risk. The gate play from Crystallize. Radiant Scan. I, I didn't see if it turned red when he first moved through, but it looks like 23 Savage has a read on this. Yeah. I think he already shoved shoved out as far as he needs to and now back to farming jungle. So Crystallize, he attempted something, didn't really work out. Does mean they invested 150 mana though going through the gate twice. Back towards top. And back towards top where Whisper has the wave right in front of his tower and is pre-farming on this Magnus. Closing in on 3k, but more importantly closing in on that blink dagger timing. Yeah. Efficiency on both sides of the map, Wisdom Runes being picked up and Ancients being stacked for either team. Lockwork now taking over mid and getting closer towards his levels. He needs level 5 and 6 to get the hook shot and get some ganks going. Meanwhile, Sand King is enjoying jungling. At least there's no sniper there denying him, but there is an Ori sentry blocking his medium camp, so... Come on. He's really struggling to find the farm he wants. That's so annoying. And 9 right now, look at him go. Might just be able to finish off Krekka's clockwork here. With the shrapnels and the assassinate, it's enough. Wait, that's first blood at minute 7? That's such a late first blood for such an aggressive no team as Pioneer Tier 2. <laughs> oh man, I was, I was so sure that like, a Nyx had died. Or, like, <laughs> Fortnite man, committing for 23 Savage. Creeps tanking for the Edict. I mean, he's still got half mana. And the Stone Gate is going to hold him back with a couple of pebbles thrown at him by the Golems too. Yeah, half mana on Healing Lotus plus Magic Stick ready. So it was an optimistic attempt there. Oh, an RP was used up at top as well, it looks like. There's Palanitza. Come back down to bottom, seeing Seb Chen and take a little dip into the water. That river, not a safe place for him. And three heroes on his head, but Seb... He's bought a bit of time there for Medusa to do some damage, but no real turnaround answer, it looks like. The rest of Palanitza will be able to get away. 
Oh, a little stun. Snake. Not gonna bounce to him, though. At the very least, the Medusa's fine. happy. Yeah. Back to the jungle. People go. Bottom lane, 23 Savage. Being contested a bit, but still finding himself staying in lane, farming, even pressuring into the tower now. And Palantir, you know, that move down bottom, it's an attempt to, you know, go kill the Chen, maybe poke at the Medusa. There's the important sort of back end of that plan is take all of the noise away from Luna and her lane. So Crystallize is still up there, actually ahead of the Medusa in farm, but mid lane, the Sniper standing and fighting Moonlight in the Sandstorm. He's still going to get run at by this Clockwork and Lash and trade out one for one. That's a good takedown, though. Get 600 gold for the Sniper, only 300 gold-ish, 400 barely for the Sand King. So, uh, yeah, still, still very worthwhile gank. And you got to kill that Sniper before he gets towards his Maelstrom. He's getting way too farmed. He's getting massive. Those crystallize. Mask of Madness done. Pretty much ready to go farm in the jungle if he needs to. Yeah, he's ready to farm, but the active heroes, like Luna is going to pop into jungle, and the heroes that you want to play around is Sanking and Centaur, and neither of them had a good game here in the early lanes, so OG might be uh, enjoying a nice lead here for quite a while. Yeah, especially if Ari's Nyx is able to continue what we've seen him do in the previous games and previous series, which is this, right? You're scouting, you're stealing creeps, you're leeching experience, and you're forcing the eyes of Pelinitia to be on you rather than on the Medusa or on the Magnus. So 23 Savage and Whisper, they're going to hit their item timings a little bit faster and harder. A hook shot though, is here onto nine. They've caught the sniper out. There's nine step forward trying to play into Ari, but Pelinitia were there with a the response. Lashrak stunned up. 23 Savage is pretty much out of mana now, but he, he got that final hit uphill. The yeah, vision. Yeah. The attack uphill does reveal that there is a ward. Quick D ward by Cracker as well. That was such a nice, nice jump into the sniper. The cogs. We can see why they let the clockwork sit mid and get towards his level six. Critical for them to be able to close the distance. And uh, of course, I had a little bit of fun with Leshrac trying to stun the the Nyx as he popped the vendetta. It's like, oh yeah, you want to stun? It's just a hasted Nyx running with no pathing uh, obstruction either. Have you seen what Seb's doing bottom? Messing with the the ghosts, trying to yeah. keep the wave from pushing. Yeah, drag the wave all the way across to the right, but he's gonna get stunned up here. His his fun's over. No more manipulating that creep wave. He, he and he an immediately ward while they were killing him. Yeah, yeah, they they saw that. That's yeah, that, that shit won't fly. Maybe with that stuff. I think maybe he wanted to put a sentry down at first, but mislicked. Who knows? Oh, he was like, oh, they got vision of me here. They must have seen me. But that. Dire Ward is further to the right-hand side. Yeah, good takedown though. They get a kill, they get the tower, and uh, Panitia, they find a way to activate here. Mid-tower has dropped pretty low on the back of these rotations though. Only 150 HP to go. Sniper has been laying into it quite a bit. As so we have a disconnect here from Seb. He's got to change his, his sentry ward hotkey. <laughs> yeah, the observer sentries. Yeah. That, that is that is one thing, you know, there's a lot of quality of life stuff that's happened for supports o over time. But I think that's one thing that still annoys me is when I have, you know, like two obs and two sentries and I want to swap between them as like a cooldown, as a cooldown on a playset. The cooldown on smoke annoys me. It's like, I, I know that I want to use this thing now. Why are you putting this limitation on me? Mm. Yeah, that little cooldown does feel weird because uh, th there's something else as well. There's a similar cooldown that I also smokes. get irritated by. Is it? Yeah, I mean, smokes have the overlap cooldown, but there's... Yeah. There's something else. Okay. I can't remember. I'll get back to it. Uh, but it's one, one of those things. One that's weird like... thing is always when you want to buy a raindrop and someone else in your team buys a raindrop. For some reason, it's a shared cooldown for replenishing yeah. them in the store. Like they're replenished well. within the second, but. Buy the Agnum Shard. You see the little, little cooldown clock. Oh, true. That was stock for a second. Gotta restock it. Put it back on the shelf. But yeah, it's like something that's put in the game to kind of help. Stop make mistakes, I guess. So you don't don't place the wrong thing. Don't place two at the same time. Yeah, don't worry. Got your back. The game just trying to look out for you. Right. If I make a mistake, I want it to be my mistake. <laughs> Not the <laughs> game's mistake. Trust me, we have we have enough mistakes in Dota. Dota doesn't need to try and stop all the mistakes from happening. We're always gonna have mistakes. This Nyx chasing a little bit with his uh, speed, but not gonna connect to anything. Got spotted by the sentry. 
back to a dead even game. That net worth lead just ping pong back from OG to Palantir back again and back again. Nothing in it. Yeah. Huge ancient stack that Sankin considered farming, but in the end he's gonna run away from it. I think Crystallize may have called like, hey, that's mine. I'm Luna. I want that farm for myself. Sankin could have taken it, but he gets his blink dagger elsewhere. Just needs 200 golds. Yeah, he's got a pretty big large camp in that northern jungle as well. I mean, like, could maybe go and farm. Fortnite maybe, man. maybe that's for the Lunar as well. Fortnite man is following the Fortnite script. You stay bottom for a while, and then when you get your first blade mail uh, item coming in, you just TP top and stand there and prevent this tower from falling. Triple Bracer. No one wants to mess with a centaur like this. There are a lot of stacks being made. Dear God. Oh, that's it. Not messing around with this. They're farming through them as quickly as possible. It's something that you know, Ari had been scouting out, but it seems like you know, OG with this draft, you, you said it, they're not really going to be actively moving forward. They're not an early game team or, or draft in general. They're looking more for that later timing. So it's not as though they're going to come and contest any of these stacks. So it's, it's a good realization by Planet that they can you know, sit back a little bit, soak up the farm. Well... They can soak farm until they get key items, but they're still the ones with the pressure that they have to do something. Because if yeah. you don't do uh, something to stop the way this is heading, this is not going to look good for you in some 20 minutes. That's why we see them smoke up now with a blink from Sanking. Looking for the Magnus. They see him. Mm, make the jump onto Whisper. Does he get the RP off here onto three? Does he even need to use it? He skewered and died. No TP. Grounded by planets. Yeah, no help whatsoever. The sniper is still being run at here, but Nine has already grabbed himself the Wisdom Rune and run away from the ancient stack he made for himself. That's a Might be stolen. ancient, though. You don't really want to lose this, and Sanking clears it pretty damn fast, too. The sniper tries to get some last hits with the shrapnel, but in the end, conceding this area. A big invasion coming in from Palinizia. That's, that's the flip side, right? OG can't do that, but Palinizia can. With Stampede, the movement speed, the blink on Sanking, they get into these dangerous spots on the map and get a kill and convert it into, you know, triple ancient stack. That's an objective. It really is. They're also looking for the tower. They didn't get immediately, of course, Leshrac has the damage facet, so he can't use the Edict to take towers. It doesn't hit towers. Um, so they're mostly looking for these kills. In the end, the tower actually stays alive there, tier one. It can't be finished off. More and more time for Medusa and Sniper to build up. Oh. Been that on cooldown for Ari, so he can't really run away that fast, but I think with the... Oh, maybe he can get him here. Yeah, they've got the hook shot. Whispers arrived, though. Two-man RP with the hand of God to save Ari. Skewered to the high ground. Whisper, he's put them on top of the cliff. Oh, they can't come down. The only escape is death. Poor Lesh. Clockwork stuck here with Sniper peeping at them. Cinema. Beautiful stuff right there. Nice little combo. <laughs> Whisper again delivering. Every single game he plays Magnus, I feel like he's at the right place at the right time more often than not. And now on the back of that, they can be the ones to push tower. And OG, they have the greedier lineup to go late game here. So if they can do some structural damage early on, that's all in their favor as well. 23 Savage with the Manta style already is pretty damn big. So often clipping someone is just a big meme, but that, that was like the best play possible. Yeah, even chaining oh, the, the stun from Nyx into it afterwards beautifully. And then you're just stuck on that cliff. Fortnite man will finish off that tier one. So a bit more money in the pockets of Palinitsa. And still dead even. Five to five. Not even a, a net worth lead to speak of here. Fortnite man also changed his build from Blink Dagger to instead going Vanguard, aiming for that Crimson Guard. I think if there's ever a Crimson Guard game, this oh, yeah. is it. Medusa on the enemy team, the Chen, the Sniper, a lot of auto attacks to block here. Yeah, and OG back into formation. They lost that top tier one, so it's a, a little unsafe on the left side of the map. Whisper is going to find that out the hard way. Sees the Lesh, the Centaur, and the Sand King all coming across. And they have this kind of Medusa backed up by the Chen. Nyx was pushing mid. That bottom right-hand corner was very well held by OG. But they've actually swung back across to defend their side of the map. They don't want to give free ancients or this migrant area for free to Palinitia. So they'll bully back the centaur for now. Low mistake by Nyx there. Not getting close enough. Had to stand right on top of the centaur. His plan was to stun with the spiked characters the moment the uh, centaur ulted. But he wasn't really on top of him. So centaur got to run away. Oh, now a smoke from OG. 
Both teams smoking. So we've got that blink RP, and you're right, Palin are playing under dire vision. Whisper, the smoke's broken on him. He's jumped away. Three men move forward from Palin as Ari's Nyx is the one left completely stranded. And yeah, OG realized the vision game there is, is not one that they can play. <laughs> Ari's Nyx used to taking every single spell, same as in the previous series. Four heroes nuking into him. Good reaction by Whisper there, blinking. But this time to catch him? Yeah, just gunning for it straight in towards Whisper. He's on the little bit of high ground here with a, a three-man RP up there. It, it looks nice, but they don't have the follow-through. Fortnite man has got into the back lines to stun up 23 and 9. And Moonlight. Let's see if they can follow through on this, because 23 is actually standing his ground and doing a decent amount of damage back. The Fortnite man wants another stomp. Stunning onto this Deucer. Ari's here to hold them back, but 23 Savage is being annihilated. Tries to get healed up, but yeah, he just stood there and took it from Crystallize on his high ground. Finally, an Assassinate will take the Centaur down. They returned some kill at least, but that is a big loss losing their Medusa. Not really the place you want to be. He tried to stand his ground. The Mystic Snake didn't have time to come back there. Would have gotten a lot of mana, but his HP ran out before it could return to him. And Palinitia again showing their combinations, how aggressive they can be and how sharp they play together in these team fights. Good target acquisition and everyone on the same target immediately. Even with a three-man RP, it was a little bit awkward. They weren't in a position to DPS, but mm. that's also because Fortnite Man, he was right on top of Sniper and Medusa, stopping both of them from attacking by a beautiful stun. Yeah, it was really well done. And Palinitia's main sort of modus operandi here has just been... If you enter a team fight, you have to be confident that you are starting and finishing it because they, they will do it for you. The amount of catch and chase and kill that they've got is, is absolutely insane. And if OG ever hesitate, they don't have the best ways of disengaging. Like they, they have to kind of, you know, sell someone down the river, let Ari die. Whisper has to RP defensively just to run away because we're, we're still in this, you know, kind of waiting and brewing period where they're steeping the Medusa in this nice bit of... Nice bit of soupy tea to get a, up to these bigger items like the Scardi. Yeah, definitely. It's, you know, gonna gonna need to be a few more items here for uh, OG to be able to stand their ground. Because as you said, if they cannot escape, they need to be strong enough to actually take the fight and bring down some of these key targets. And Panitia, they're getting towards big item timings themselves. Bloodstone coming up on Sanking not too far away. We have the Manta Dragonlance Mask of Madness on the Luna. So flying ahead in item progression. And, of course, the full Crimson Garden Centaur. Hunting the clockwork now. Nyx looking for a pickoff. Maybe two. Yeah, sees the lash in the back. Clockwork at the front. Going to hook shot. A hook shot back into the Nyx. And OG, another kind of hesitant approach to this fight. This time, they will get Ari out of there. And it looks like the rest of them retreat. Medusa was nowhere nearby. Yeah, they knew they didn't have Medusa. And they also knew that the TPs were coming in. They even had a ward up on the top part that saw people heading towards the gate so uh yeah now they forfeit the area though and palanitia wastes no time straight into the roche falls very quickly to the damage of this entire team going and uh oh. this is them just conceding a big objective first aegis goes the way of palanitia yeah i mean we've had this topic of things palanitia have done every game 20 minute roshan also seems to be one of them my brain is saying hey you know out of the like eight games we've seen, seven of them, we've had them just go for a 19, 20 minute Roshan. Yeah, this is actually like later than average. Usually it's 18 or 19 minutes. They usually find themselves in the top left corner of the map taking Rosh up there. True, yeah. Um, but yeah, they do find Roshan here, get the Luna Aegis, so could consider pushing some uh, tier two towers. Sniper farming up with a DD rune, but meanwhile, bottom lane, positioning and posturing, actually pinging out the mid tower. Tower is still sitting pristine at 1800 HP, but not for long. Radiant are taking Tormentor, meanwhile. The PSA 10 tower. <laughs> well, Ari, who's walked into... Oh, and it's again. And the Luna, like you say, was moving down that mid lane. And they'll shift in to help her take that tier 1. Yeah, and I don't think they want to waste any time as well. Taking the tier 1 with Nyx dead as well, maybe they will find themselves moving towards bottom. Or we might see the Luna head back and build more items, but three minutes on that Aegis. Definitely want to get more done. Straight back up into this bottom jungle. Take the tier 2. And you put yourselves in a, a good spot here. So move back into like Radiant Ancients area, play mid and top. 
Fortnite man has declared his intentions here. He even has the dragon skill to burn down the tower a little bit extra fast. And uh, isn't too uh, harmed by the tower shots with all his damage block. 24 armor and the Crimson Guard on top of it. 3000 HP. An absolute monster. And a, a game where Sand King you know, had a very rough start. Has found a lot of these nice pickoffs and fights to kind of push forward, then go back and farm. He's now 2,000 gold ahead of the sniper after being devastated by nine in lane. Yeah, now heading towards top here. I think they want to invade and take away the Ancients area. Medusa, a hero who relies very heavily on farming Ancients repeatedly. They know she's been doing this for a while and they want to put a stop to this. Big smoke wrap around here. 23 Savage. Does he have the read on the situation? He's going for the Ancients. Well, you know what's Ooh. funny? I I don't think 23 Savage had the read, but Seb pinged him, and then Seb drew the line exactly what Talents are doing. So they knew this was coming. Whispers in with an RP on the Sand King. 23 Savage still at about half mana can turn around and get some shots back out. But Crystallize is He's here with the Eclipse off. now. The big damage being dropped on the Medusa's head out of mana, but the stun comes in from Ari. Kills off Moonlight, saves the Medusa, but is it enough? 23 Savage nearly dead, finds the kill on QPFY, but finally taken down by Crystallize. Now, Fortnite man's going to TP home. Ari, he's still hunting. Can they find the Luna? But she's been left alone. Clockwork's going to sacrifice himself, skew it back into the sniper, but that allowed the Luna to get away. That's a pretty damn good fight for OG. They held well under the tower there, used a lot of their advantages in the positioning there, even using the glyph to get extra damage dealt as they were diving in. That was uh, a very aggressive fight, as we expect from Pyonitia. They don't lose the Luna, but it cost them quite a few heroes. And every single kill worth so much gold. Sanking, a thousand gold for that. You know, e even just Clockwork feeding away 700 gold per death here. And it's, you know, it's another plank on that bridge across the chasm for OG to get closer and closer to the other side, right? Get it closer game. to the late game. Get us to late game. Sniper Medusa is not too greedy. Get yep. us to late game. There's like lava and toxic sulfur below them. All these bigger AoEs and sandstorms and stuff. <laughs> like Just a, a little bit further. Yeah. Lava, on, Mr. Frodo. Toxic, toxic stuff. Reasonable, reasonable arguments, you know, all, all these things that we don't need. Top push is coming in again. Crystallize with the Aegis going back to this tower. Asking if anyone wants to defend now that Magnus doesn't have his RP. Ari slips away. <laughs> again, very speedy. The bug. It's a reaction. You step close to the Nyx, he immediately skitters away. He's Tripped got Tremor Sense. So he is going for a different itemization, by the way, on Crystallize. This is very interesting to talk about. Well, not very, perhaps, but he's going back for Butterfly. This is very okay. awkward, as you know, normally we don't see it. But in this particular game, you're against a Sniper and a Medusa. So getting some evasion against that right click is going to be very value. Already, though, nine ever vigilant to itemization differences like this. He's buying an MKB next item. He's queuing it up already. Yeah, like usually it's Kanda, right? For the Luna at this point? Yep. Yeah, yeah Kanda would be the norm. Uh, or BKB for that matter. He still doesn't have one. But in this game, BKB not that uh, essential, I would say. There's RP, there's Stone Gaze. Good stuff to go through it. And there's not really that many small spells to block. Uh, pretty much the next Assassin. Yeah. And he might just stun you from Vendetta anyway, so... Yeah, very true. So, crystallize. Good little adaptations there. As we are still dead even in this game, 26 minutes in. Still dead even, but the power spikes. I, I fear that Polonizia are about to hit a very hard power spike where they get the Shivas on the Sand King, get that attack speed reduction against the Sniper and Medusa. And with the Crimson Guard and Shivas, they could have really strong sustain in the fight. And next Roche as well. Nyx, gonna get everything here. Okay, no, <laughs> no, no Sand King, but he just scutters away. There, that's so illegal. <laughs> How does he get out of that? He just walked away. He's British, isn't it? <laughs> get away with anything, mate. Oh my god, it's so illegal. Ari <laughs> just know. enjoying the map here. And you know what? He's low HP, but not for long. Got that Dagon in his inventory, so... Wait for him to just look at something that looks juicy to click a Dagon on. Gotta get his HP back real quick. Zappy zappy. Yeah. Find a big creep. We'll heal you. 
23 Savage closing in on that Disperser. So a better way to kind of get out of the team fight or deeper into it. You know, as, as we've said, Planitio can choose when and where to fight around the Stampede, Hookshot, and Sand King's initiation. OG Almost needed some kind of answer for, to that uh, maneuverability. Yeah. Almost a necessity for a Medusa to have that Disperser or a Hurricane Pike, something to allow you to reposition quickly. You see a uh, 28 minute coming up soon, and Crystallize throws Look a question it. mark at the tier 3 tower saying, What are you going to do? Forces the Magnus TP immediately. Splitting them up now a bit. They haven't shown in the base though. Magnus and Chen still hiding here under the effect of smoke. Finally gonna reveal themselves. Yeah, you've gotta deal with these bloody illusions. I doing quite a lot of damage. Yeah. Ari has in the meantime. Shard. Dealing wisdom rune. Yeah. They trade one for one as the other rune is taken by QBFY. Moonlights, yeah. Hand King, you're talking about that Shiva's guard. 15,000 net worth. Very, very farmed. And that's a Sand King who barely could lane. He, he was having a really rough time on the mid lane, but he recovers really well in the jungle, and they've taken quite a few good team fights. This has been a pretty cautious game. 9 and 10 kill score at 28 minutes. A lot of it due to OG wanting to play this slower style and farm their way into a late game. Snipers. As we've been saying about them, right? They've been very good at picking these moments where they sense weakness. They understand that they can take a fight, take an objective. Find that little bit of wiggle room through the experience of Seb. Yeah, Sanking really was under hard. vision there for a while. Has to be careful since he uh, did take the, the Cloak of Flames and has the Sandstorm. Very easy ways for the Nyx to initiate on him when he wants to. The smoke coming in. Puts down a ward. Seized QBFY. And quite a long Roshan respawn. So both teams are going to be vying for control around the Roche pit. But it's soon going to swap sides. As we've got 40 seconds till daytime. And OG smoke about to expire. But I think, I think it's OGR. twin gate time. Yeah, they're making the play for the twin gate now. They're saying we can go through. They're going to check Roche first. See that it's not up. And they're just heading through. They know. Yeah, very well it's a good time up. to leave this area. Medusa already pushing out top lane with two illusions as well. It's not an easy spot for Palinizia. I like what they're doing though, right? They don't kind of follow and go to the Roche pit, go to Twin Gate. They're immediately thinking, snap into action, push out mid and run down bottom. We've got to chase this, but we can't take the same path that they've taken. Yeah, definitely not. It would be a death trap to go through the gate. So instead of going through the lanes, going to bottom. And uh, there's already Ari sitting under a ward. Trying to wait for the arrival here of... Fortnite Man and the crew. Well, Halberd on Fortnite Man now as well. Yeah. Extremely good game for Halberd. It's a, an item that we very rarely see ever since it lost its status resistance. But it is so damn good against Medusa and Sniper. I'm happy to see the itemization. I just had real hard deja vu. I feel. Did we see a halberd day one? And you said the same thing as well. Oh uh, no, we discussed the halberd as ah, an alternative, but then right. commented how it's you know just very out of meta. I said it would have been good in a game, but then I think they ended up not buying it. There was a in similar game, spot with like two big range carries, and it's like halberd would be so good. Why aren't they buying it? And you're just like, it's not that good. I mean, it's five seconds of Medusa not hitting when you click it. If you get two Halberds, you can cycle them a little bit. Ten seconds of her not auto-attacking, it's really rough. Um, but yeah, we talked about how BKB was the reason that Halberd is not purchased anymore with the change of the interaction. Uh, mm. However, Medusa doesn't have a BKB. Sniper doesn't have a BKB. So Centaur, now in a good spot to disable them. Or disarm them, I should say. 23 Savage, frontlining here. As we're about to see Roshan respawn, and both teams are nestled down in this bottom right-hand corner of the map. Posturing. 23 Savage and Fortnite. Yeah, Posture, look at them. It's like, hey, how you doing over there? You know, looking over the garden fence. Yeah, what are you up to? I can't go on you. You can't go on me. Clockwork, though, wrapping around slowly here, trying to get a position for a ward. At the same time, Ari, keeping an eye on it. Let's get the ward down. There's a satyr in the pit, so OG see the Roshan's up and not being taken. Yeah, they know about it. The pinging that mid lane is pushing in. There's a catapult, four range creeps as well. 
Forklift is available defensively. It's all about this Roche. Top lane is actually pushing in with the Catapult and a big Creep Wave, and that tower is not that healthy. Of course, they have Glyph on Radiant too, but this is the side lane pressure you have to worry about while posturing here non-stop. Both teams are trying to hold on. Yeah, this I mean, is a long standoff. Yeah, you can't really go back and deal with that top lane, can you? You don't have X mark or anything. If you TP there, you're stuck there. And both teams want to fight around this Roche pit. So the Glyph up. The glyph, the glyph is there for the defensively dire, though. Keeps the catapult alive. I think Radiant might have to do something defending. Uh, yeah, I mean, OG have to make a choice, right? They've got to make a choice of go back, defend, uh, push out lanes and give up, or go. It's fine, actually. The tower is going to survive here. Okay. All the melee creeps did die, but it's it's so stressful. I have to like... judge that, you know? We're staring at it, but the players have to stare at their positioning while making this call as well. Nothing has changed right now. Two minutes almost of standing off here. Who is gonna budge? <laughs> Nobody, apparently. And Lashrak even just throwing some split earths down. Try a bit of uh, demilitarized zone in front of the Roche pit. Make sure no one can come through. Fortnite Never... man being targeted a bit here, poking at him. Yeah, that scard is a bit annoying, but Ari didn't want to commit for it. Sits back and and waits because the, the clockwork was actually wrapping around from the northern side this time. Oh, they're going on Cracker. They're it's starting. Him. The stun's there into the Blink Skewer, and Clockwork dragged back into his death, but the Sam King returns fire onto the Magnus now, with Fortnite Man jumping on the chin. Seb's in a bit of trouble, getting blown up, but QBF has followed the Clockwork into the grave. Whisper's still alive. So is the Chen on the left-hand side. They turn on to 23 Savage, though, with the damage comes through thick and fast. Medusa dead, and the chase is on. This is where Planitza are so strong to get in on top of people, but the Sniper has been able to kill off Fortnite Man. The front line of OG protecting nine for now, but Lost not for long enough. They've got the jump, the gap closing catch, killing off the sniper now as Ari tries to hold the line with buybacks coming out of OG. Deuce the sniper in. and the Chen returning in with 23 Savage, buying back to look for the Leshrag, and they'll find him. So OG, Roshan belongs to them, but it was a, a costly, costly one. Yeah, they paid big price for that. Buying back both Sniper and Medusa and Chen as well. Sure, you get a die back on the Leshrac and you are going to win this Roche, but that was a hefty price to pay. Nice play there by Planetia, the way they dive in onto the backline. The start of the fight was a little bit messy because Leshrac got stoned by the Stone Gaze from Medusa as he tried to run in and help people. He, he just got caught by Medusa on the way there. And hold up, Cracker, looking for the steal. No way. Uh, He's too much in the way. Whisper and two Chen Creeps in the way, but he does cogs up Whisper. Inside with 23 Savage, this Medusa, she bought back, but she's going to kill off Moonlight. Sanking down, Crystallize moves forward. Seb, he's about to drop here. <laughs> Roshan Ban on the floor in the pit, but Cracker, he's going to face off against nine while the Scardi slow and Whispers move forward. Crystallize, the fast Luna, getting tagged up by the Scardi, but Moonlight, he bought Nix back to come in to try and save her, but Crystallize is dead. Now Moonlight and Fortnite Man, they're tanky and strong, battling into this Medusa. She's got ages though, so difficult to kill her twice as the BKB from Whisper allows the skewer and then the blink maybe he's gonna get jumped by Moonlight and killed the Sand King finds the takedown 23 Savage in the meantime he's taken down Cracker's Clockwork as Nine has returned on the scene of the crime Fortnite Man and Moonlight chasing straight in on top of him they've got Nine locked in place trying to land the, the stuns he's got a Hurricane Pike to move away drifting off to the left hand side and 23 Savage is still here alive dishing out the damage but Fortnite Man and Moonlight dropping so quickly they found the kill on Nine with QBFY and now on to Ari as well the Nyx Assassin great carapace good timing there keeping 23 Savage Savage in the running, get the damage out onto the ledge, look for more with Moonlight now, running away in the sandstorm, but slow down, they can't go for more. Medusa gonna return back to base. The two minute standoff was worth it for a fight like that. Oh my God, I have the dumbest smile on my face right now. Like 35 minutes into the game, we have a crazy fight worthy of a 70 minute game. This kind of buyback play, the constant fighting there, that was, <laughs> that was worth the two minute standoff and then some. Crazy stuff going in. The Blink Dagger on the Lesh, allowing him to come in and help again to get on the back line. The priority on Pioneer Sayer is right there, getting on the back line. And I think the center itemization is also paying dividends. The Halberd is mitigating a lot of the damage output here, coming out from Medusa otherwise. And this is game one, hey? Uh, this, <laughs> game we're off to a good start three. for the series, man. Good start for the series. My goodness gracious me. So where are we? Medusa top of the net worth, no ages. Luna second place just behind her.
Wisdom Rune spawn, Tormentor's back up. Lots, like there's so much stuff on the map to go and get because you've been in that bottom right corner for so long. Yeah, definitely. We also have the tier four items now coming up. So gonna clear out some neutrals, see what we find if we get any big impact items. See what Medusa finds, already thinking about it. Got, uh, got himself a BKB queued up as the next item, by the way. This Medusa is tired of not being able to hit and getting stunned and stunned and stunned. All the disables from this Panizia draft is absolutely crazy to play against. He did get himself Mindbreaker, so very nice find there for 23 Savage. Great DPS increase. And then Crystallize back into that phylactery. Picks up an Illusion Rune, runs it out. Into these lanes. To... also has the uh, Trickster Cloak with Butterfly combo, and Medusa Ooh. went for that Daedalus, so it doesn't have MKB. Hard Ooh. for him to hit into this. But then it's Sniper's job to hit the Luna? Yeah, but Sniper has, a... <laughs> he, Sniper has the job of surviving. <laughs> Oh, Lesh, the target. You self yours into Blink. Well done to get some distance. Ari, though, he stepped forward. Hand of God buys a bit of time for the bug to escape. Meanwhile, 23 Savage inside the cogs. Yours into the sky. In comes Moonlight with a stun and epicenter. But the four staff away and the RP on the Lunar. They've caught Crystallize on the right hand side, but they're struggling to do any damage. As nine is still on the low ground to the top left of your screen. And 23 Savage trying to run back. He's going to get clipped by a bunch of. Glaives following him all the way through. No matter how many four staff you've got, Palanis will chase you. A double kill for Moonlight, and Ari is going to be the third here. A Yules into the sky comes down with a thud, and a Carapace will buy a moment of respite. But Moonlight is there with a the triple. No buybacks on OG, and now Crystallize. Uh, we know what happens when Luna breaks your tier threes. Yeah, she already finds Creep Wave on the bottom lane as well. Gonna go for this Rax, and we have Mid Wave pushing in. I think they're gonna make sure to push that tier to tower as well. Oh, they might even just go for Throne. I think they wanna end the game here. Take the tier three straight for the Throne. The buyback's being expended. They know they've got this game. 30 this is seconds. It. Oh, dude, there's no way. Whisper. 30 seconds for the Knicks. Whisper. No, they call it. Whisper doesn't even have a chance to. Okay, you refresh our piece in that bound. <laughs> <laughs> All right. GG called. <laughs> Goodness gracious me. I mean, it all comes down to that, that one fight, that one moment. It, it lasted five minutes, but it was one moment in the bottom right corner. Just beautiful yep. execution from Palanitia with the chase they had, and OG ran out of gas. Yeah, so, so the determination from Western Europe into Dream League Season 24, and OG already sprinting out with a, a five man smoke, but they're not all grouped together. Timber's heading bottom, and the other four up towards top. Yeah, people going out for the, the word placements here, but quick move with the Monkey King being in smoke and transformed. He's rushing out to the top lane very quickly. He's going to try and put a lane ward, I think, or is he going deeper for the, the ancient area ward? He's actually just running through the tower as well, assuming that nobody's going to look here. Nobody is. Uh, nobody is he going for a base yet. ward? I'm not sure. I think you will just ward for the ancient area to uh, keep tabs on, you know, stacks being made for the Bristleback. He might get okay. spotted here. <laughs> he sees like, the I guess lion. he's not a. It's not Shin Q playing Monkey King, right? He's not, uh, you know, base warding to go and kill curries and stuff. He's a mid lane Monkey King. Yeah, they are pinging at the lion, but they're not quite close enough to kill him. As they Please. shut down the Watcher, so of course Radiant know that they're there. And you shouldn't be allowed to do this as a Monkey King with a Timber Sword on your team. You're going to give him PTSD flashbacks. The you trees are moving. The trees are run everywhere. Run at him and high five him. Yeah. Very spooky. Like all oh, that Sand King going low ground. It'd be oh, risky for Fortnite man. Dangerous, yeah. Surrounded. And he's well, going to have to level up Burrow Strike to get into the tree line. Bushwhacked and will take a fair amount of damage. But no first blood. No death for the Sand King there. Almost surprised that they didn't chase there. They had Seb's abilities available, could have leveled something. Monkey King could have stunned Ice Shards after the Burst Strike. And three bounty runes for Planets here, too. They're the team that's most likely to get bounty rune advantage. So, whatever they're doing, like level one, is actually working out so often. Yeah, again, it's like worst case they get two for two, best case they get four, you know, or first blood or something. That's definitely, definitely paying off. Drinking buddies allow Seb and 23 Savage to get even more damage in onto the Sand King and bully him away from lane. Try and give a good start to this Luna. Big yeah. good starts. Four and nothing for the Monkey King. I can see on the board up there. Doing decently early days. But is this a, a lane that's like level three dependent? Uh, I think he 
Yeah, it depends a little bit on levels, but so far, Moonlight not wanting to skill up the Shadow Strike as well will be pretty tough lane without Shadow Strike. I think some lanes you still should probably go back for it, even though it's not meta. Monkey should be doing quite well uh, into a Blink, uh, Blink Screamer Pain build. You were doing very well. I'm very proud of you. There's enough money for the bottle now. And come out shortly. And it seems like everybody's getting their fair share of farm. No one's struggling at you know, one last hit, minute three. Timbersaw, six and nothing. Ari trading hits with Krekker's Lion. And actually, that's probably something to point out as well, as Krekker has very often been playing these strength melee position fives, only in a handful, a cut, maybe one or two games playing a ranged one. Yeah, he gets to play a lion in this game. Going to be a little bit tricky positioning as well against a Hoodwink and a Tusk. Have to be careful not to get jumped in this game, but we'll, we'll see how he can deliver. One thing is for sure, uh, Palantia are very, very good at coordinating their uh, their spells and their combos when they go on someone. Nine managed to chase Moonlight all the way back under tower. Water runes are here though, so a bottle refill and back into business for the Queen of Pain shortly. Yeah, he did put two more points in Shadow Strike, so he went back for it, just didn't go for it on level one or level two. Now he has two points, though. Dense against the melee hero. Go for that laning build. Especially when Nine is doing this with his boots advantage. Going for the hits. You gotta get some damage, and that will slowly start taking down the Monkey King. As long as you don't give him easy Jingo triggers, he won't have a way to sustain in lane. Monkey relies heavily on that lifesteal, otherwise he won't have any way to regain HP. He did not go bottle or anything like that. Right. So every bit of damage is gonna stay. That's right, right. He's going for the Jingo there. Yeah, but taking quite up. a bit of damage to get it. I have a nice way of arriving at him. So Pretty shortly, though. And these side lanes was line up to. And mana draining whisper. Crystallize 16 and nothing. Getting himself towards the arcane boots so he can keep spamming out the quills. Yeah, so far, lane. no real like, kill threat on anybody. No, bottom lane pretty much farm trade. Top lane, though, ice charge locking in. The sanking he burst strikes out. You see why the sanking is picked into the tusk as well. Not too worried about him. They're starting to dive deep here, chasing Fortnite man. Blood grenade too. Like going in on that Sand King, but he's got back to his tower. Dark Willow looks like she's given some covering fire for him. Handed a tango now as he's gonna struggle to get back into the creep wave and get some last hits. It's like nine. Didn't quite get the Jingu stacks up from the Queen of Pain. Ah, got the three, but didn't get to hit his four. Gonna control the runes though, with some help from Seb as well. The Queen of Pain might not get a bottle refill here. Links forward. Ooh, then he's in danger. Yeah, the Tusk is here. The drinking bodies gets Nine into position. Get the Jingu stacks going. And the first blood for Nine's Monkey King. Minute four, and another kind of slow one there. Again, but mid lane on mid lane action with, yes, Seb and Nine, right. They're tipping each other, well deserved. Yeah, actually, uh, Nine getting a first blood again as well. He got first blood in uh, one of his sniper games as well. Doing quite well today. Played the matchup really well, I would say. This is a difficult lane for Monkey King. You have to really know your limits. So far, dead even on last is 21-2 and 21-2. But of course, that first blood puts the Monkey King well ahead. He's considering Whispering. making some rotation, but gonna go back to mid. And Fortnite Man had to burrow past the shards to get away from this Lunar Tusk. Dark Willow had gone back to stack, it looks like, so a bit of an opening there. Starting to drag behind in the last hit just a little bit, as they do keep that pressure on him. TP bottom now. Ari finds a bit of low nine. HP. Well, nine nearly died mid. Oh, the neutral scream, gets him. But down at bottom, Ari's died to a neutral creep. Blood grenade and stun thrown onto Whisper. Timber Chain back to safety though has got him by the tier one. Oh, QBFY could have killed him with the Shadow Realm, but he was thinking, oh, that guy is already dead. I'm gonna hit over on this Timber Saw instead. Meanwhile, Fortnite Man left alone top being chased. All these defensive stunts all the time. Running out of mana from just trying to escape so much. Yeah, as soon as he gets hit by the ice shards, he is out of there with a burrow strike. Monkey King also thinking about a move down bottom. Six minute rune is coming up pretty soon, and they're making a play on the Queen of Pain mid lane again with the chain stuns not quite there. Very, very close though. And now oh. nine 
Sonic the Wave and the two supports, they're going to turn around and kill the Monkey King. Good reaction from Palanitza. Yeah, the support's making a nice move towards mid there. All support's playing for the rune, of course. Seb is going to be the one to get the shield rune. But losing your mid hero now also gives a little bit of time for Fortnite Man perhaps to get some space. But as I say that, Seb is on his case again, chasing him. The Sand King is so upset with the way things are going. Oh, oh. has he got away with this? Luna. Burrow to high ground. The courier is scouting him. Seb sends the donkey overhead and there we go. Lucent Beam to kill him off. Yeah, nice. At least he pulled them away from tower for a little bit, so they missed some last hits during that. Lions thinking if they can make a kill happen on top. Willow is around, but they need to wait for the respawn, I think, from Sand King. Yeah, go bottom instead. Wisdom Moon spawning, ward. but uh, Seb not quite in time, so he goes for a ward instead, meanwhile. Looks like it's signaled out. By QBFY. They're not going to go back up into their high ground, but I think they've got an idea that vision has been placed there. There's another little circle drawn by the willow. I see an angry little cloud on you, lion. Oh boy. He's coming for you. Dodges the damage, jumps after him. Oh, the stun misses. And crack up. You're going to feel the pain from the Monkey King. Got outplayed there. The Jingu dodging the damage so he could jump after a little bit faster there. Very well done by nine. And kind of eyeing up that bottom lane now. Yeah. Dire scan doesn't clip onto the bristle bank because Crystallize has already ditched that medium camp to go through the twin gate into top. By 23 Savage, it looks like he's trying to make the same move. Killing medium camp and probably wants to come bot with the rest of his team, but this is probably into playing quickly. 23 Savage with a TP gets cancelled by the Brambles. Yeah. Down he goes. Keeping out right in front of QBFY, not gonna work. He lands that Bramble, of course. Five heroes now pushing the tower quickly. Getting a tier one tower for themselves early here. And uh, Seb is coming top, but can't really do too much. Meanwhile, bottom lane is being pushed. Mid lane being pushed by Monkey King and Hoodwink. Queen still oh, does have man. ulti, so they're looking towards maybe getting a timber kill. Not the easiest. Uh, he smells it. He's running away. Doesn't see people on the map. Does have his friends coming in though. So now he feels more confident. Poke his head around the trees. Say hello. What's up? Yeah, he could bait this for them. Planning oh, to bringing everyone down here though. Monkey King. First point of contact. The snowball and drinking buddies though. Getting back on top of the lion so nine can stay alive. Buys a bit of time for Whisper to do damage with Ari onto Moonlight. Monkey King, he's gonna die eventually. Fortnite Man and Crystal Lance, they're, they're here. They've got the big spells onto Whisper and the damage just keeps on flowing. Palinitia, bring those numbers to kill off Timber, Monkey and the Tusk. Two cores and a support. Looks like a good start at first. They're saving a little bit against the Sonic Wave with the Snowball, trying to keep people alive, and they got a quick kill on the Queen of Pain. But to turn around, you see the Sand King show up and just showing why this hero is a first pick material as well. And of course, Crystallize, being pretty unharmed in that fight, gets to right-click down people quite hard. The I lovely the part speed. about being Bristle and people just not wanting to focus you. The speed at which Palance to play. 23 Savage has been caught out several times by these movements from them, and yet again, he's being picked off by a pairing. Yeah, it's QBFY all over the place, man. He's again getting these ganks happening. Bedlam damage coming in. He's done Luna very quickly. Queen of Pain finds Seb. And Seb runs away, finds his buddy. <laughs> he's drinking, buddy. There is. Ooh! That's a oh, we... solo kill right there. Well, Crystallize was on like, I don't know, 400 HP and TPing. I I, I, I didn't think Whisper would get that, but he knew, he just knew he had the damage or he went for it. Yeah, I also didn't think they was going to die down there. He uh, had the healing Lotus on him before the TP as well. Could maybe have gone out with it, but yeah, good kill recognition. Of course, Whisper has a fair few games on this Timbersaw hero. Trust yeah. him to know the exact number of damage that he does. But, like, seriously, that must have been pretty close. Like, I, yeah. uh, like 50 damage difference. Crystallize probably stays alive there. It, a big well thing about that is um, the, uh, the facet he takes, the Shredder facet, is so nice for this. You get a lot of extra splinter damage, especially early on.
And of course, the extra chakra facet is still pretty popular. A lot of people do play it. But mm. this facet has risen in popularity more and more. And we see why. The extra slow as well is super annoying when you play against them. One second of 60% slow on max level is not that uh, is not to be trifled with. No. Especially with a hero that does so much damage over time and likes to chase people down. It'd be useful. Yeah, stacks Big being made stacks. for both teams. Huge stacks on the Ancients going on here for both sides. I was like, why are we looking at a catapult? What's, what is this? What is the catapult doing? It's, it's, it's Monkey King. He's chilling. Yeah, he's, uh, he's hanging out. <laughs> Monkey and his uh, 72 transformations. How do you know it's... How, why do you know it's 72? Because he tells me when I play the game. Oh, does Lycan's he? Lycan's got one transformation. I've got 72. He's Fair very... enough. He's very mocking about it. Oh, I've not listened to that one. Can you name all 72 of them? <laughs> of course. There's the salve. There's the donkey. There's... <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm going to stop catapult as well, apparently. But does every single courier cosmetic count <laughs> as one transformation? Uh, that would I can turn thing. into a frog, into a tree stump, into a dog, into a... <laughs> the mightiest a transformation is the Roche. That's the powerful one. Oh, it is, yeah. Well, bottom rune, illusion for moonlight. See Seb coming in. But that's going to be a, a runaway from both teams. He's closing in on his Dagon on the Queen of Pain. Meanwhile, Whisper is farming up these stacks and getting really big. Cleared out one of the ancient stacks, clears the big camp, and he's going to get this stack as well. So they're putting a lot of eggs in the timber basket right now. But it's a good basket, man. Looking really, really strong and competent here. Nice whisper. Yeah, you gotta Ooh, let the, the man boy. cook. BBFY runs in as his hide to Tusk. Another reasonably slow game. Yeah, it's a bit of posturing here and there, but both teams feel pretty confident about their timings right now. Palantia, they do have a timing that's not gonna be the late game. They, they have a mid game timing where they're gonna activate really hard. That's what happens when you have Bristol back and this type of draft around it. Uh, of course, OG, again, leaning more into late game. It's less greedy than Sniper Medusa, but Monkey King and Luna are both going to scale really well. Both teams smoking up. I, I run by Palanitsia, yeah, but Dive could come in. Smoke breaks on Ari. They have a ward behind to see the high ground here. Move back into mid, where Monkey King and Luna are prepping for a tier 1 push. Looks like QBFY holding up bottom, not getting involved. Dan King up at top, starting to make his way down. You're not stopping this tower from dying, though. Yeah, no, this tower falls, no contest. Don't really feel ready to take the fight. Of course, they didn't go for a Blink Dagger. They're going for Bloodstone first on the Dan King. So it needs a little bit of time. It's a suspicious banana looking at you, Fortnite man. Not He's jumping after you. Oh no, the anti combo. Whisper. Deary me. <laughs> Jumps a no. tree and immediately a timber chain brings you down again. No tip, no high five. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Just a sincere sorry in the voice. Great comments. minds think alike. Who alike sometimes. And yeah, they both want the same tree. And Cracker, what's he got? A brace or oh, two braces on the line. Tank it up. Two braces lion, two braces dark willow. One bracer on sanking. Got a Nolt houseman feeling a bit fancy. Oh, yeah. Little splash of spice in his life. Yeah, we have a clear lack of bracers on OG. Not enough bracers. I only see two. Uh, that can't be enough. Meanwhile, six bracers on uh, Radiant. That's with them buying double Null on the Queen of Pain. So that means... Oh, and it's your ahead? They're, they're winning, yeah. They got they're more winning? bracers. That's how we measure it. Oh, oh queen. Is that going to land? Thumbs up the queen. Sonic wave to turn back on the tusk with the finger of death, though. And Seb pays with his life, trying to catch up to that queen of pain with the monkey king now. Nine sprints forward, aiming for moonlight. Chakra oh, not quite enough. Doesn't finish her off. Now Sand King and Bristleback into the mix with the eclipse from 23 Savage, though. Bursting through Cracker. Nine has died. So has Fortnite Man and Whisper. Everybody just being crushed by the massive AoE damage being spilled out by Bristle and Luna, who are 
both looking to try and escape, but Moonlight is back in again. He got Survive the on one HP, comes across with the Dagon, the zaps and the magic damage. They want oh, Ori and they don't get him as well. That's a wipe. Dear God, that dive. They committed a lot of resources on the Tusk, which led OG to think, okay, they already blew the Sonic Wave, we can take this team fight, let's go in. But Crystallize shows up with the Aghanims on the Bristleback, dealing a lot of damage there as well, turning the fight around. And then beautiful kiting. I can't believe Moonlight stayed alive during all that. And of course, not even going base, uses the Dagon on the Catapult, then he's back to full HP almost. Rune for him, and this is a huge swing in Polonitia favor. Ah, nice 2k lead now for them. 11 to 7. And they boot OG back. Still one of these situations, though, where, like you know, getting across to kill off some of these tier ones is still a bit of a challenge. Yeah, but this is back. Man, this hero. You're very happy to be able to win fights like that when you're not going Blink Dagger first on tanking. The Bloodstone build is the greedy approach, so Fortnite Man is intending to scale here. And the fact that they dominated that fight that hard really puts them in a great spot. Deep vision being planted by Seb here. Moonlight Invis gets away from them. I'm just a big fan of this, like, Luna versus Bristleback. Stand your ground. Hit into people, spill that damage around. Whisper's damage before he got bursted as well. He just absolutely cut through the Sand King and almost brought down the Bristleback as well in that fight. It's crazy how fast he uh, dishes out the deeps. Nine gets hexed up. Yeah, and Seb's being run out as well. They move over across the Monkey King. Whispers Timber, he's in. Cracker's killed off by the Sharpshooter as they save up Seb, but not enough to get him out of danger completely. And now the blink forward from Moonlight. Like poking at Whisper there to send him back. Yeah, one for one trade for now. Nice deep ward here by OG. They see everybody. Got the high ground vision. Ari planting good vision, but they still don't really feel like fighting this. Gonna back out. I think their timing is gonna be more around the Gleipnir on this Monkey King. Yeah, they need someone to to catch, right? Like Timbersaw here, not going Blink Dagger. The pipe into Kaya, very much. I mean, it's like a second round of damage and initiation where Monkey King and the Hoodwink, I guess, really the primary forms of fight starting for OG. OG have good team fight, but they have pretty lacking lockdown overall when you look at about yeah. uh, look at it. It's Especially the fact they went Mage Slayer instead of Gleipnir Rush on 9. I understand why uh, the Mage Slayer is good here. You're against a uh, Bristleback and Queen of Pain and Sand King. It's amazing. Uh, even against the supports, it will protect you really well. Fortnite man might get jumped here. Went past the ward. It's going to be fine. But the fact that he didn't go Gleipnir, they're at a severe deficit here in the team fights where Willow, Lion, Sand King provide more reliable duration stunts. Yeah, tons of them. We do have a minute. Rod of Atus on Ari, though, on the Hoodwink, so he can always set up a little bit. OG in the right place now. Yeah, minute 19. We talked about it last game, right? This Roshan taking from Parnitza has been systematic game after game. So right now, Ari and Seb kind of in front of the Rosh pit, making sure it's not happening too soon. And then they can go through the gate, take control of that bottom right corner. Maybe even get that D ward because it looks like QBFY has got a good observer on the gate. And looking towards that bottom right corner again. Tusk was spotted moving out here, so they might get him. Actually have a high ground ward as well to see him again. Pinks out the high ground ward. Still might get jumped. Definitely gonna confirm that there is vision. But still, he loses his life and might see them move down bottom here and make a play around the Roche again. Can they they just I guess with the goo, farming. they can? Yeah, they, they can take it. It's not the fastest, though. They're, they're lacking a bit of damage. Um, the Roche damage isn't the highest on their team. Both teams are kind of meh at Roche right now until they get like solar crests going. Smoke coming out now. Link Let's dagger plus out. bloodstone timing. Sanking is enormous at this point. Nice, pretty damn farmed. Both counters just going to push out that mid wave. Crystallize getting tagged up with a couple of Ari spells. And Cracker with the haste rune steel. Blink burrow in from Fortnite man onto Ari. Timber Chain and the Sharpshooter is a disengage, but the Sonic Wave, it's here with the magic and pure damage. Finger of Death and the follow-through from Fortnite Man. The Bounder Strike trying to hold them back, Boy but he comes up Burrow onto the fall! 
four. Fortnite, man, what a god. Nine with the Wukongs. The big golden ulti here from Nine. Hey, it's just off the mark as pun, it's ya. They're going to retreat, the fall back. Again. They kill the Willow, but this Sand King just burrowing back in onto them. Nine is dead. Whirling death, the damage from Whisper kills off Moonlight. The Crystallize doing so much work with the Bristle back, pummeling them down. OG are on the run. Get to the hills, Miss Palanitia are coming for you. The Baked Bread Boys are going to destroy this Luna with another couple of stuns. Snowball save. Maybe a turn on the Fortnite man, but he's too strong. His 2 by 2 his 4 by 4 he's killed them all. A dominating streak for him and the Bristle back. They killed them all, and that was a buyback on Timber, and sadly, his buyback, he came back into the fight, cut the tree again, I think, for Monkey King. If I didn't see that incorrectly, Monkey got stunned by the Timber, then oh, got no. chased on by the opponents. Complete disaster here for the side of OG, everything falling apart. They did get a good kill on the Queen of Pain, but now losing the double Wisdom Rune as well. This is just a very big blow to the OG timings. And I told back. you that tanking is huge. The Bloodstone AoE increase, I think, was what allowed him to get that beautiful four-man stun, hitting everybody. The Ravage. Yeah. Big old stun. It really is. Already has the Veil now, building towards the Shivas next. Once he gets the Shivas, the damage is reduced a lot from OG, since they have uh, Monkey and Luna both relying on their attack speed. Takes away a lot of that. Yeah, so many, so many players on this team, man. Like, you know... I don't disagree with anything you're saying, you know, pointing at QBFY, he's like standout player, Fortnite man to me, and Crystallize the kind of, you know, mastermind experienced player. Moonlight, I, I don't know how much his balls weigh, but he's got to go to a fucking doctor to check them out, because on his Lesh, on his Quop, no matter what he's playing, his Primal Beast, he will jump blind into the middle of five, and somehow still, like, escape and go for round two and round three. He's, he's out of his mind. But that's also what defined them so quickly to me, that this team, man, they look like they've played hundreds of games together. I said it before, but that that kind of confidence in your team, he knows that they're going to back him up. Maybe he will die, but he knows that they're right there to avenge him. And that's the trust that he has in his teammates. It's really nice to watch them play. They always bring this level of aggression, and it works out more often than it doesn't for them. And now it's Roche time. A little bit later than usually they script, but getting this Aegis for free. Be beautiful over on the side of Crystallize here. He can lead the way, not be too worried about the uh, Timbersaw cutting him down too fast. I think oh, if seven. I was nine, I would be worried about Timbersaw cutting me down at this point twice now, getting cut off his tree. They yeah. need to communicate. I go top, I go high, you go low. Well, they do something about it. No, it's not working out for them. I've got a couple of streaks here for the Sand King and the Bristleback. They're really popping off, and yeah, Bristleback with Aegis now. <laughs> Agonim's Bloodstone, Aegis with two lives. I think Palanitza are ready to run down some lanes and get some tier twos. Double Bloodstones, you need a counter from uh, OG coming out. You need some Spirit Vessel or you need this Shivas coming out from Timber, but he's not prioritizing it yet. Going for Aghanim Scepter first, the Shivas is a long way away. It means that healing is going to be healthy for quite a while for the bread stack. Because this bread is unhealthy, man. Look at them healing. Making them very strong and powerful. Yeah. Also, a spell life steal from the Queen of Pain. To be fair, you you really need some <laughs> some uh, reductions against this. Double damage rune for Quop as well now. Alanitia setting up a base camp in the enemy ancients area, pressuring into tier twos mid and bottom. OG, <laughs> hey, they've got a portion of the map here to themselves. Top left corner, Luna, Monkey. They're all farming through, so. Not a, not a massive loss for OG, as they actually bring that 7, 8k lead down to about 5 now. Yeah, OG finally hit the timing that I talked about. They have the Gleipnir on the Monkey King, so now they have some extra lockdown, some way to set up for his own ulti. Maybe make these plays happen. Moonlight almost gets smoke broken by Seb. Fortnite Man will find him. See the task. Split second jump there as well. The moment the smoke is gone, he blinks forward, stuns immediately, and there's no way to react. Not that the Tusk has any way out of that one. He's just tanking the smoke gang for his team. Yeah, buy some time for 23 and 9 to get in the BKBs. Accurate D wards, though. They find the ward on the, on the cliff. They're up their own ancient area and shove OG away. Aegis has given them plenty of space and there's still two and a half minutes left on it. 
And Bristleback hasn't had to move from this bottom lane in the Ancient, so he's accelerated pretty far ahead of everyone else now. Yeah, two minutes on that Aegis, so going mid and looking for something more, get some more structural damage here. Yeah, just cracking this tier two. I don't think there's any defense being mounted by OG. The Tusk there to potentially delay a little bit, but can't really do much about it. Chivas is done on the Sand King now, so they're the ones who are going to have some heal mitigation. High ground time, though. Here comes Parnitzia. Yeah, Crystalize. Big, strong, ready. Level 3 on that ulti as well. A lot of damage out of Whisper. The Crystalize is going to Bloodstone and try and heal back up off the Cool Sprays. It looks like that's a signal to retreat for now. Very commonly, we see the second Aegis being the timing to go into the enemy base. I think pushing this early would be a disservice to the lead that you already built if you're Palanitia. OG know this, that's why they keep farming as well. They don't really suspect they're going to go into their base. They are hovering, though, for anyone who comes out to push mid. Even the Timbersaw could get jumped here. People are ready. map is pretty dark and scary for OG. Just that one observe ward out there. It's oh, Monkey King and Luna scan. trying to find a little bit of farm where they can. Fortnite man was reading that Monkey should be farming the Ancients, but Monkey King, 23 Savage, he pops the or nine, he pops the scan first before jumping in. Very clever. They are safe. Is that a mango? Is that a Monkey King? <laughs> What's on the floor there? Sanky was spotted at mid. They know he's pretty far away. They don't have Luna though. I've got the hacks into Terrorize. Sonic Wave and everything. Kills off Whisper, dead for 70. Now the Monkey King jumping across the trees, but he's stuck on the low ground. He's in the sauna, and I don't think that's where a monkey wants to be. Down in the water, he wants to be on top of a tree. So Moonlight QBFY and Cracker will just pound down on him. A quick takedown there on the timber solidifies that fight. Luna tp in quickly, but she can't really join before the timber already died. Now Sanking cutting, cutting the midwave while they set up to push bottom again. It is 15 seconds and then it's going to be gone, but with 40 seconds death on both the cores here, this could just be Rax here. Yeah, and again, a situation where you do not want to buy back on Monkey King. Your item progression no. just halts completely. It, it's not a comfy situation at all. Doesn't want to buy back, but losing your Rax doesn't feel good either. As the tier 3 down, Crystallize boldly steps forward. So does Fortnite Man with a borrow oh, strike, laying two men caught. That's two supports, both dead. No buybacks. Yeah, that just gives them a chance to keep going here. They can keep pushing. 40 seconds on the Hoodwing, 30 seconds on the Tusk. At least they can get some damage. Maybe tier 3 tower and then back, but who knows? Maybe they can even keep going for a Rex. Fortnite Man is just so quick. Instant reactions. He sees a, you know, he sees a pixel of a support and he just goes on in. Yeah. They do need a sentry here. There's an observer ward right up there on the cliff. They miss it by just a hair with the sentry drop. Dire to keep their vision. Luna, they see her out alone on the map to the left. He's going to TP back and defend. So Parnitsu are respecting OG returning to their base. The high ground vision. Like you said, the BKB 23 Savage gets it off in time before they land the stuns. Fortnite man oh, on the, the run, the in. snowball, dragging them back in here. 23 Savage, with the help of the Wukongs, maybe they can stand and fight this. They've blown up Moonlight, Fortnite man down. Sebel trade his life gladly to keep 23 Savage alive. He's back up to the high ground, he survived. OG, somehow, some way, with that little bit of vision, they saw the Sand King coming. And fantastic situation for OG, as two buybacks were committed by Palinitia. They're so aggressive. They popped the buybacks thinking, maybe we can take the fight, but... They didn't get to fight, and this is a huge blow to Palanitia now. They ruined their own economy by buybacking on Sanking and Queen, and now if OG get a kill on either of them, they have a big window to make something happen. The script was written. We knew what was happening coming into this <laughs> game, right? We're heading We're gonna go, game. Uh, gonna go 60 minutes. OG have a, a bit of a struggle early on, but fighting back. I'm glad that every time that I say something good about QBFY on his Willow, it always gets reaffirmed by we uh, us watching a game. Like, look at him. 7-1 and 13. How has this guy been part of 20 kills and died once as a support? It's yeah. so crazy to me how good his positioning is. He always has, you know, the proximity to the fight where he can have his impact, but also stays alive. It's very, very clean. 
And we'll see what they can do. Oh, gee. Now that we've seen those buybacks come out. Or was it Sanking and Queen of Pain? Yeah, Sanking and Queen both popping buybacks that just give them a little bit of a bullseye on their head. Big targets now. Nine could look towards them. Especially with potential Roche spawn soon. They have BKB on the Monkey King as well. Big timings here as they have the 8 second BKB still on the Luna. Monkey King gets his 9 second BKB and uh, Timber with the Aghanims and Pipe is finally maybe tanky enough to die immediately. We've seen the burst potential from Balanissia. One hex combo and you're usually not alive when the stuns go down. A long Roche spawn, but it's still going to be daytime Roche. The scan is there from Palinizia. Turns red, turns green, turns red again. A bit of Christmas light show for them. But they're going to smoke up and move into the area anyway. Because again, Roshan could be up now. We know it's going to be another two minutes. Yeah, smoke from either team here. But smoke is running out. Resmoking on OG. Making sure they stay hidden here on the high ground. Holding pretty good positions. Monkey could maybe sit on a tree somewhere to protect. But maybe traumatized by Whisper cutting down the trees. <laughs> I'm a tree yourself. Yeah. But then you're going to have Ari trying to bushwhack onto you. <laughs> I don't think that works. I well, think long... this move by Palinizia has been read here as the Sanking showed himself. I believe that OG already realized what's going on the rep around here. That's the same move they've done time and time again. It's yeah. the, the Team Spirit classic, right? Come in behind the Roche pit, long wrap around with a smoke, and try and set up for a fight. But OG, they're holding high ground on that twin gate and they are still smoked up. Yeah, you got to hold the high ground, got to hold the vision advantage. Smoke is going to run out here for OG, so now they could see them. It is daytime, so long range vision here. Teams both planting down vision on the lane. Right, so the next two minutes, three minutes. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll go and take uh, take a drink right now, because, you know, we've been here before, Gary. <laughs> oh, was cut it their two waves. three minutes last time? Yeah. The standoff. Okay, here's the, here's the plan, Gareth. Stand on the gate until Roche leaves. Right. And and then you have the gate, so you also leave. Yeah. <laughs> Just migrate somewhere else. I'm done with this country. Jumping in timber. And the timber. feel like it's time to fight. Uh, nice earth spike. The big damage. The He's turnaround of the Whisper and Sep kills them off. Moonlight blinks away. Nine and 23 Savage trying to chase back Fortnite Man, but he's been forced staffed out of danger. Oh, gee. Lose two heroes. They've got to buy back on the timber if they want to use it, but now 23 Savage being run they got the by this on the sanking. Street. He's got no chance to stand and fight. Nine will try, but he's going to die. Four heroes on his head. Surround the Monkey King. And another huge one for Palinitsa. Look at them. Look at their HP pools. They trust each other so much. They just dive in. Everyone using their abilities correctly here. It's so clean to watch. I really, really cannot praise them enough for their targeting. Fortnite man surviving just barely with the four staff there. Staying alive, getting himself to safety. Cracker, this unsung hero with his little four staff making the uh, crisp play to save his teammates. But the decision there to burst the timber saying, you know what, we can go on him. They blinked in, went to a timber, then immediately hexed up, I believe, the tusk as he went in? Or was it stun? Either way, they reacted to, uh, to the tusk drinking buddies in, and he just got combos as well. Yeah, that line earth spike on two of them. Like you say, the tusk went in. Yeah, it was line stun, stuns right? them both. Yeah. Difficult for Seb because he doesn't have a blink dagger. So if he wants to save anybody, he pretty much needs to blink in, but. Every single time I see Seb trying to save someone, he just becomes a plus one. He's like the plus menu right now. He's uh, the hot fudge sauce on your Sunday. He's the special deal. Is he a hot fudge? I, I think he's more he like the fries the, on the, the cool. side. Yeah, he's Tusk after all. He got to be like an ice cream special or something. Yeah, it's the hot fudge on an ice cream Sunday. Oh yeah. Or he's the. Uh, you know, do you want to supersize that? He's the. <laughs> I he's think Polonitsia uh... always want to supersize him. Oh, they absolutely do. A tormentor for OG to give the shard to nine. But very shortly they're going to have to defend that ground. You know what I ground. noticed about Fortnite Man? Studying into Fortnite Man, the, the mystery that is this man. He loves going for a Yule Scepter, like fourth item. Doesn't yes. matter what hero he's playing. Just buy it. He buys it on Centaur, buys it on Sanking. Sanking is pretty common, right? But even on Centaur, he'll buy this Yule Scepter just so he can chain disable someone. He will blink them, he will stun them, and then he's gonna Yule's them and just hold them in place. He's like acting as a, I don't know, a warden for someone. Someone becomes a prisoner in uh, in his disable combo. 
Well, yeah, he, he's always going for that plus one, right? He's like a ranger with those bowlers going around and hunting, uh, you know, the poachers. The poachers are trying to kill off the, the cute little animals. And he's like, nope, absolutely not. I'm going to lock you in place. So he just goes from one target to another. He, again, you come back to the point you made with the trust, right? He trusts and knows that his team are going to kill target A. So he goes onto target B, sets it up, and then the rest of the team follow through onto target B. They kill him. Stan King has moved on to target C because he's got this blink yule stun to keep on going. Yeah, they're all over the place. They're they're really great at how they how they prioritize who to kill first. And also his Stan King is not really an easy kill to take down now. He has BKB flying out, craggy coat for the extra armor, sitting at 40 armor passively, with the lifesteal coming in from the bloodstone as well, and then BKB blink, Yule Scepter, and Burst Strike. This man is not an easy target. I think if you're OG, you have to bring down the supports. It's Lion and Dark Bull. They gotta yes. die early in these fights. Yeah, that's why I was kind of wondering. I mean, Whisper not going for a blink, which he has done in the past. And this you know, Pipe, Aghanim's Kaya all makes sense. But I, I do just have that nagging feeling in my head. If he had a blink, maybe they would have been able to find the opening into these support kills a little easier. Yeah, maybe blinking in with the Aghanim Scepter, getting the shield up and getting on the back line to, to provide some vision. Sometimes we've been talking about the draft, how having a Zeus or something to open your eyes allows the Monkey King to find his targets. But in this game, OG doesn't really have that. They don't have the vision advantage to that degree. They have some night vision from Luna, but that's about it. They still have a lot of immediate damage as OG. So if they're able oh, yeah. to open this fight properly, you know, get 23 Savage into position, a good catch from... Uh, it's just like, can the Hoodwink get a catch, right? You, you said it earlier, they don't have many consistent guaranteed lockdowns very reliant on bushwhack that's and snowball bristle. and that, that's that's gonna get them a kill on the bristle the first life gone wukong's command and maybe another stun but crystallize fast on his fingers with the bkb to slip away a whisper and not able to keep giving chase so panitza just soft reset fall back a little bit consider your options great hold by og don't expend too much there. I mean, they used some ultis, but they still have the Luna ulti. Luna BKB is still intact as well. Same for Monkey King's BKB. So they still have plenty to uh, hold and keep fighting here if the push continues. They get the, the Aegis bursted. We see a Timber Saw, the amount of damage he brings to the table. Anitia now staying in OG's jungle, being invasive here, being uh, highlighted by Seb. Got the correct read. And knows where they are. Indeed, that's the spot. Running Quite pretty a bit of gold now on a lot of heroes as the first back running around with 3k, 3k on 9, 3.5k on the Luna as well. With the Kanda complete, not going Hurricane Pike, he's thinking about a Silver Edge next to deal with the Bristleback. That little dip in the graph there. You can just feel the, the OG <laughs> fans, you know? <laughs> They're like... <gasps> Yeah, but then they swing it all back again. There's that fight out of the mid lane, wasn't it, when they, they chased out, got some big kills, took the streaks. Oh, it's a, kind of shutting the door back on. Yeah, the OG double again. buybacks as well. Really dug into the gold difference. Ooh. And two cores going back. But now we're far away from that. The buybacks are back and off cooldown here, of course. Nobody has any... Uh, down their buyback at this moment as we see OG working their way out on the map. Top lane is pushing in, they're not defending it, but they want to get some item progressions. Tier 4 items being distributed. Have a hammer for Timber, that's a really nice find. Queen of Pain with the Timeless Relic, though, that's definitely up there in the S tier. Ooh, yeah. Has the Octarine. Is she going for Ags next, like we saw in that? Yeah. Aghanims okay. and then leveling Dagon to max level is the plan. And I think this is a fantastic build in this game since Shivas was already being purchased by a teammate. Otherwise, right. Shivas would have been a good addition for him. Ooh, Monkey King. No. He sees the two of them trying to go through the gate. Oh. Stealth fuels from the Willow. And the Queen of Pain got through the gate, so Boundless didn't hit her. As the Dark Willow Shadow Realms with the Gleipnir will connect, Queen of Pain comes back down again to try and help out. Nine spent BKB Wukongs. It looks like he's going to get stunned up. TP was optimistic. And the gem will get reclaimed. I mean, that is only the second death of QBFY. And it did cost Monkey King his life there. BKB is expended as well. The eight second duration. Now chasing up to Seb. And they do have vision on him. him. Queen of Pain's coming. He's got the drinking Beyond buddies. Blink. Get back to the hoodwink. Uh, they're going to catch Seb here for sure. 
Sam King's going to get a courier snipe. Blinks forward. Sonic wave. And for good measure, a final bit of damage. Another good takedown there for Palantia. Being active on the map. They know that Roche could spawn at any moment. We know it. Or actually, no, it's still two minutes. Sorry. We're going to play to push out the lanes a bit, though. Top lane and mid lane. Yeah, and the uh, pushback is going for a basher next, so more lockdown is coming in. They're being annoyed by these uh, BKB commitments by Monkey King and the BKB on Luna. Having something to go through that would be handy for them. Oh, for sure. I mean, thinking of Luna, it's been a very quiet period for 23 Savage. Okay. Yeah, he has really not been shining. 2, 5, and 5. And he's trying to keep relevant farm. Almost has his Silver Edge, but still needs a bit more farm before he can break the Bristle. Oh, Bristle? Pretty Glad isolated. Near. Bushwhack doesn't land. And off he pops with the little cloak he's got. Yeah, they spot the Queen of Pain walking through here as well with the Sentry Ward combination. Sees her Invis moving past this. So I feel like this, this here can be one of the problems of Luna, where... There are quite a lot of items that you can go for and you maybe want to go for. And in this game, you know, he's like adapting, thinking about going for this silver edge deal with a bristle bag. Is, do you think 23 is struggling to find that perfect itemization in this game? It's a bit tough because he had Dragonlance. He sold the Dragonlance to have the Shadow Blade. So he keeps the Power Treads instead. But it feels a bit bad to buy the, the Dragonlance and get rid of it again. Mm. Um, and yeah, he, he gets forced to get the Silver Edge here because Crystal is such a big threat. You can't just have the Hoodwink be the only source of break. Um, I think the problem is more that Luna is supposed to hit that mid-game timing and push out, you know, take Tier 2 Towers. Look at it. All Tier 2 Towers are intact by Palanitia. They've just yeah. been in control this game. Oh, TP's home on Savage. Okay. Gonna stay safe. Fortnite man again with the read though. Look at where look, look at where he is. Like four, five seconds slower than than he would have liked to have been. But still yeah. right, just, like, right place, wrong time. Me a, a good read on the map. And by the way, Fortnite man has hit level twenty five. He's the oh. highest level in the game. He has that sandstorm talent now. The blind and the slow. It's really tough to fight into. Now if you step into that sandstorm, can't really move around as freely. Pair it up with the shivas, and it can be a devastating slow. We can see there on the levels in net worth. A hard game for Seb. Has to give a, a lot of the resources to his cause as they try to catch up. 6,500 net worth, level 15. He has a Splink Dagger now, though, so saving people should be easier than before we had to slide in to save them. I should hope so. Two minutes on the Roche, taking a sweet time again. He's just tired today, dude. Every single respawn <laughs> feels like it's a max respawn right now. He's had enough. He's had enough of it. Right, another Green has the gold for Aghanim Scepter, but doesn't want to use it. Buyback could be useful here as the smoke comes in. 23 Savage has shifted over to keep on farming. There's a DD top, but I don't think anyone's going to get there before this fight actually breaks out. Some early vision placed. Ward and Sentry to look down on the Roche Pit. UPFY standing in a smoke break position under the Roche. We... We might get your wish here, right? One minute for Roche spawn, and then there's going to be like 40 seconds until he moves. <laughs> we could Depends. get that situation where we go through the gate and follow him. Depends who's going to flinch here. If anyone decides to go and leave their positioning, OG falls in your corner. What are you going to do? I think Polonitsi are happy with the positioning they have. Holding very defensively here. And OG, they don't have the best initiation. They don't have a Magnus or something like that. Timber is great for damage, but again, no Blink Dagger. Can't get in on the back line. Not that easily. I think a timber chain, but that doesn't reach all the way to the back line right now with how they're positioned. No. Fortnite. Ooh, Fortnite man. He moves forward, seeing if there's anyone in the trees. No, maybe he has the ninja gear. There. He has the extra smoke, unlike all these other suckers. The only one with a ninja gear as well. So he's the mm. sneakiest. Very sneaky. Though he has a sandstorm following him, so it kind of gives you a clue where he might be. <laughs> His whereabouts are approximated by the sandstorm that's following him. It's like back in Dota 1, Sanking had that as like one of his abilities back then. And Terrorblade's hero model also had a little hoof prints on the yeah. floor. All these little things where you're like, I know where you are. Exactly. Follow you. This word from uh, OG is giving some pretty valuable vision though. And it's, yeah, I'm not really stepping up to try and find 
Roshan, I mean, I don't, I don't want to call that an attempt, but started by Crystallize as Timbersaw goes Go on, in Tim. very deep. Moonlight, half HP, BKB's up, but it's Wispo who's being shredded by the damage coming out. He survives with his Aghanim's up, shields himself as Crystallize gets turned on and Moonlight is slain. OG have killed a big core and forced to buy back out, but Fortnite Death Man, he's back in again. The Sand King and the Lion, the Impales and Earth Spikes come from the ground up into the backside of OG. Down goes the Luna and the Monkey, and it looks like Palanitza might just have this one. Ari is down and out. Four heroes gone for well over a minute. Roshan is going to move to the dire side, so at the very least, planets are going to have to go through the twin gate to get it. But OG, oh, I just can't find the opening they need. I mean, they sit there for so long, posturing, trying and waiting. And in the end, Planitia say, screw it, let's go on the timber saw. They jump him. And again, even with the blink dagger, Tusk was not able to snowball save him. He got disabled himself. Timbersaw barely saved his own life with the Aghanim Scepter, but he didn't get snowballed and rescued there. Again, these AoE disables are screwing over Seb really hard in the game. Yeah, I mean, Lion with that, like, triple Earth Spike <laughs> is pretty, pretty difficult to bypass. What yeah. have we got? Moonlight bought back, gets the Aegis, so we'll have the double lives. Aghanim gets brought, he has two banners on Cracker. Oh, no. He's gonna <laughs> bring them down, slap two banners in the Dude. OG base. Look at that creep wave, hey? Yeah. Big creep wave coming in. Catapult as well. <laughs> They're on the line. They're, uh, a lot of stretched out to this. Did he just force staff one of them forward? <laughs> like, go, go ahead. Break yeah. that back to a regen. Get a little bit faster. Yeah. Nice little details that Cracker is bringing to the table here. 20 Put seconds. Second banner down too. Do it. They're jumping in. Timbersaw bashed up. Aghanim Scepter going, but in the back. Fortnite man, dealt with by the snowball save. Whisper's still in the middle of them all. The Sonic Wave will kill him off. Dead for two minutes and there's no Timber Saw. He's Banking. down and out. Yule seen the mobs. In trouble as well. Fortnite man with the Yule's in the stun. Catches another one. A triple kill for Moonlight now. And a three versus six emerges as OG outnumbered and outmanned. A Wukong's command comes out from nine to zone them out. But that's all it's going to do. OG can't follow through. They can't defend their buildings. Han Itza just come in and start whacking them again. 100 seconds on the timber, so I don't think you have anything to pray for even. BKB on cooldown now on your Monkey King. No ulti on him. It's all up to 23 Savage, but how do you deal with the entire lineup? There's Aegis still on Queen of Pain. All these resources. OG don't want it to be true, but they're about to get too old by a stack of bread. <laughs> the Gluten Kings have arrived. I hope you're not <laughs> intolerant, OG, because they're coming to a, a game near you. Moonlight. Not even dead the first time. Found the strike, it takes the Aegis out, but now Nine's being run at. Sand King and Bristleback reconsidering their options because 23 Savage, the payload from the Eclipse, the damage on the Fortnite man kills off him and QBFY. 23 okay. finally getting some damage out there. Uh, the trouble is they've lost all their buildings already. They lost the buildings, commitment, but buybacks here, Queen of Pain, uh, being joined up here by the Sand King. Dark World coming in. The move in onto Bristle. The snowball forward, but 23 Savage stunned by Fortnite Man. Pops the Manta, and Tusk turned on, killed off, but Crystallize is dead. Fortnite Man is Sand King in a one versus three now. He's going to get blown up. Oh, the Terrorize. Has that got him out of danger? It looks like it has. QBFY comes in clutch to save his buddy, but they've lost Moonlight now. Can it be another one? Fortnite Man is back in again. The Yules in the sky, buying time, saving them up. Drop nine will stand tall and strong, staying alive. Pound the strike away. Survives oh on 100 the HP. The oh, he lives. He dodges it. Nice. Presses of mine. I think he would have lived anyway. The heal from the fountain in time there, but he dodged it last second anyway. Presses of mine for the agonims of Queen of Pain. But the commitment there from Palanitia now putting OG in a spot where they can turn the game around. 100 seconds on Queen, 100 seconds on Sanking. <laughs> Look at the buyback status board. The script, Gareth. Follow the script. It's coming through. OG. Run down the mid lane. It Tier can't be all out like this. OG needs a three-game series. They can't possibly go out on a 2-0. I need a three-game series. I want to watch more Palanitia versus OG. I think this is game five yeah. we've seen from them, and it's just, it's just incredible Dota. They're gonna try and hold as they may here. They don't have any buybacks, I believe, but they have Lion. That's it. The only one who can come back, but not really the hero that soaks a lot of damage before he dies. One minute. What can OG do in one minute? Creep wave is coming. Their damage is really high. Luna. Monkey King, they can crush through this tier 3 tower pretty quickly, but I don't know if they have it in them to bring down the throne in time. 
I mean, there's mega creeps. Ari's trying to deal with them. Pushing out Hex. top, defending bottom. They jump in the base in the Radiant side, though. Trying to get on the line, but that Abyssal Blade holds nine back. That's the nine buildings BKB. are trying to focus down this tier three. Wukong is out as some zonal control here. And OG, they, yeah, they can see the movement there. They want to go for tier fours. They've got 30 seconds. Potential here as the Glyph will start to wear off. They've got Brambles down. QBFY trying to step forward with Cracker, but that Lucent Beam does a lot of damage onto the Lion. Bristle back. He's trying to move forward and get into the midst of it. OG is still holding the, the line, delay though. The Queen is almost up. Three seconds. Two, four. She's coming. Couple of seconds left. Royal OG, Peter. have you got what it got to take down this throne? I don't know. Nine will jump away from the Sonic Wave. Bristleback has turned on. The throne is still alive. Seb, oh, I don't know what they can do about this because Whisper's getting blown up by the Queen of Pain and Sanking on the left-hand side. Taken out. Dead for 90. Luna gone for two minutes. Chris Lies comes out with a double kill. And OG left with no option. Absolutely all dead destroyed there. Ari. What a nice defense, though, by Palanitz here. Cracker sitting back with the Ether Lens. Octarine Core on Lion spamming those stuns. He gets tipped by his entire team because he was really the one holding the base there. God damn, the AoE on his stun there with the extra AoE on the 30 degree cone. Man, strong hold coming out from them. They had a little bit of a throwy moment, Palanitz here. Pushing in, buybacking, dying in the enemy base. OG had a glimmer of hope, but I think it's all over now. It looks like it, yeah. Ari, the last one standing here, obliterated, and GG called Palinitia. A stack that's come up, rising stars, a relatively unknown team has come through this qualifier and slapped down some of the known players. Man, I, OG put up a fight, but that, that's just not what you expect. I mean, it, it's not what OG would expect. It's not what people going in 